Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Thank you for joining me. Today I'm going to be doing probably the first official sciences podcast. On my YouTube playlist, I'll put out a podcast called The Sciences. That should be out first before this. I'm not sure what topic I'll actually upload first. But this is going to be a great one. In my opinion, this is what really gives me my spirituality is science. And this one in particular was something that I found doing my Facebook live stream. So I'll explain that real quick. But the article is from Universe Today, Space and Astronomy News. It is written by Matt Williams. Supermassive black hole orbits an even more massive black hole crashing through its accretion disk every 12 years. This is where the meme where the mind is blown. And I ain't, ain't putting that all out on my channel, so. Black hole orbits a black hole. Holy shit. What the fuck? This blew my mind. So I'll explain first what I do. I sometimes, to get me more discipline, more experience, more uh, being comfortable with speaking and carrying a conversation, I go on my Facebook and I do a live stream. And I talk a little bit about what's going on in general. And then I go through my feed and I'll mention articles and people's posts, not their names in particular, not really. And as I go through them, I'll make note of a, a science article or a religious article or a political article. And if I get feedback in my chat, I'll discuss things with people in my chat. Once a friend came on, joined me on a call. But it also gives me a way to store content because I'm dying to do a sciences playlist on my channel. It gives me my uh, sense of wonder in the world and the universe that we live in. There's galaxy, all the billions of stars. It, like I said, it's my spirituality. So going through my Facebook and doing, I did a four hour podcast also, a live stream. That was the longest I went so far. I note down these articles when I like them and I prepared a whole bunch of them for this, where I'll just literally read the article and then kind of sum up at the end, um, just the, the mind blowing aspects of all of it. So we'll start with NASA's Spitzer space telescope. Maybe retired, but the things it witnessed during its 16 year and a half mission will be the subject of study for many years to come. So there's a, there was a Spitzer Space Telescope and it captured some amazing stuff. I'll continue. For instance, Spitzer is the only telescope to witness something truly astounding occurring at the center of the distant galaxy OJ287, a supermassive black hole in a parenthesizer, SMBH, orbited by another black hole that regularly passes through its accretion disk. And this is mind-blowing because I'm going to put the link in here. There's actually models they built. I'll get to that. Whenever this happens, it causes a flash that is brighter than all the stars in the Milky Way combined. Using Spitzer's observations, an international team of astronomers was able to finally create a model that accurately predicts the timing of these flashes and the orbit of the smaller black hole. In addition to demonstrating general relativity in action, their findings also provide validation to Stephen Hawking's no here theorem. And there are links here. This is a pretty good site. So you could look at the article yourself when I post a link in the description, so on and so forth. Located 3.5 billion light years from Earth, OJ287 is what is known as a blazer, a galaxy with particularly active nucleus, and a jet of high energy particles extending from its center. At its center is a 
supermassive black hole that is roughly 18 billion times as massive as our sun. Uh, we can't picture how many people in the world, how big the earth is, our, our solar system, the sun, 18 billion times as massive as our sun. I don't know how many times my mind can take this and be blown because I've gone through this article a number of times and it still gives me goosebumps and chills, making it the largest ever discovered. Whereas the black hole at the center of the Milky Way, Sagittarius A, is about 4 billion, oh, I'm sorry, is about 4 million solar masses. <laughs> The black hole at the center of the Milky Way is 4 million solar masses. The supermassive black hole in OJ287, 18 billion times as massive. <laughs> Holy shit. Now, there's a video, which is awesome. They've done a modeling of it, and you can see the effects that it has going through the disks. It's mind-blowing. For decades, the astronomers have been aware of the binary nature of this black hole and determined that its companion, which is 150 million times as massive as our sun, geez, completes an orbit once every 12 years. Twice in its orbit, the smaller black hole crashes through the massive disk of gas and dust surrounding its larger companion. These collisions create expanding bubbles of hot gas that move away from the disk and are extremely bright. These flares are known as Eddington flares, which was so named to commemorate the centennial of the solar eclipse observations conducted by Sir Arthur Eddington in 1919. This famous campaign validated predictions made by Albert Einstein and his theory of general relativity, which he had formalized just four years prior. Because of the irregular orbit of the smaller black hole, it shifts position with each 12-year orbit and is tilted relative to the accretion disk. This means that it collides with the disk and creates flares at different times during its cycle. As long as astronomers have known about the binary nature of these black holes, there have been attempts to create a model that could accurately predict the occurrence of these flares. And like I said, there's a video here and it shows you the model. And there's lots of pictures that give descriptions. In 2010, scientists succeeded for the first time with a model that could predict these flares to within one to three weeks, which was confirmed when they predicted the appearance of a flare in December of 2015 to within three weeks. By 2018, the same team responsible for this latest study released an even more accurate model that could predict a flash to within four hours. This is science. It's, it's science or nothing. It's just awesome. In their latest study, the team showed that how Spitzer data confirms that their model is correct because of how it accurately predicted a flare that occurred on July 31st, 2019. The paper that describes their finding titled Spitzer Observations of the Predicted Eddington Flare from Blazer OJ287 recently appeared in the Astrophysical Journal Letters. And there's a link here. The observations were rather fortuitous as OJ287 was on the opposite side of the sun at the time. Luckily, Spitzer's wide orbit, which brings it to a maximum distance of 254 million kilometers, 158 million miles from Earth. Wow, some of these fucking numbers just blow my mind. Allowed it to observe the galaxy on July 31st, the same day a flare was expected. Spitzer was able to keep observing the galaxy until September, at which point the galaxy was no longer obscured by the sun. Wow. Seppo Lane, an associate staff scientist at Caltech IPAC and the lead author of the team study, was responsible for overseeing Spitzer's observations of the system, as he recently stated in a NASA press release. 
Uh oh, NASA, look out, flat earthers. Quotations. When I first checked the visibility of OJ-287, I was shocked to find that it became visible to Spitzer right on the day when the next flare was predicted to occur. It is extremely fortunate that we would be able to capture the peak of this flare with Spitzer, because no other human-made instruments were able to, were capable of achieving this feat at that specific point in time. And there are artists, concept pictures... The nature of OJ-287 is also expected to produce gravity waves that astronomers here on Earth will be able to detect using facilities like the Laser Inframometer Gravitational Wave Observatory, LIGO. In fact, the waves created by this system are expected to be so large and energetic that they will be measurably alter the smaller black hole's orbit and hence the timing of the flares. Previous studies have made have been made of OJ-287 that have accounted for gravitational waves, but the 2018 model is the most detailed to date. By factoring information gained by LIGO since 2015 into this model, the team was able to narrow the window in which the flare is expected to just 1.5 days. To further refine their predictions, they also included details about the larger black hole's physical characteristics. This is nuts. Specifically, the new model incorporates the no-hair theorem of black holes, a theory originally proposed in the 1960s by a team of physicists that included Stephen Hawking. This theorem predicts that the surface of a black hole, or rather, the outer boundary, aka the event horizon, is entirely symmetrical along its rotational axis. This further narrowed the team's predictive model to just a few hours. What the fuck that means, okay? Science. By predicting the smaller black hole's orbit with this level of precision, the new model supports a no-hair theorem. This confirms yet another prediction, this one made by Caltech professor Emeritus Kip Thorne, who in the 1970s described how an object orbiting a supermassive black hole could reveal whether its surface was symmetrical or hairy. More artist interpretations. Accounting for whether or not a black hole is smooth and symmetrical is important to determine the timing of the smaller black hole's orbit. While an object's orbit is predominantly a question of mass, the distribution of that mass matters as well. So if a black hole were hairy, it would have a noticeable effect on the orbit of anything around it. In short, the OJ-287 system supports the idea that black hole surfaces are symmetrical along the rotational axes. Quotes. It is important to black hole scientists that we prove or disprove the no-hair theorem, said Maury Veltonen, an astrophysicist from the University of Turku and a co-author on the paper. Without it, we cannot trust that black holes, as envisaged by Hawking's and others, exist at all. Such is the nature of missions like Spitzer. Long after they retire, the results they obtained over the history of service continue to inspire discoveries and breakthroughs. So long, Spitzer, and thanks for the infrared data on the cosmos. And there's a link for further reading. Man, this article is just mind-blowing. You know, I try to listen to lectures, and some of them are like, when you listen to the whole thing, it's... 15 hours long, you listen to the, you see them on the chalkboard with the students. I I watched them all, you know, trying to describe black holes and how they operate. So just wrapping your head around the premises is hard enough. What's the proof of them? We finally got somewhat uh, more evidence, uh, just building on more evidence. But this blew my mind. That a supermassive black hole orbits another massive black hole and crashes through his accretion disk. It just blew my mind. And when I saw the video, these are things that I couldn't... But there are things when I go to my Facebook live feed that I make a decision. Like, is it worth it for me to open it and show and tell people and read it? Because I'll read it live. This I didn't do. It was so mind-blowing to me. And I'm watching the video. I... You, I'm not ready to stream things 
because I have Wi-Fi. Not even Wi-Fi in the house, but I'm getting on a hotspot. So I'm trying to tone it down. That's why I got all the black and white colors, plain, no real cameras and stuff like that. That may become in the future. But I make a decision. You know, oh, this is a funny article. It's uh, um, 10 words you never thought you would want to use and things like that. And I'll just go through them. But I take note of these. And this one is just mind-blowing. You got to check out the... You got to check out the link and just, if you're a science nerd like I am, yes, I admit it, everything in, in science intrigues me, especially things like this, that just how small we are, what a crazy, crazy universe is out there. A supermassive black hole that is roughly 18 billion times as massive as our sun. Can a human mind grasp these, grasp these things? I think it was Leonard Susskind and some of his um, lectures and stuff describes how hard it is because you, you, as a scientist, you study your whole life to come up with pathways to get to these predictions and the scientific method and that we're not evolved for this. Our brains don't work properly in the right way to get to the heart of the matter fast enough. But generation after generation, science compiled more science, the scientific method, all the uh, disciplines all work together, peer reviewed, mistakes are corrected and they happen, but there's no other better way to figure out the reality that we live in than through science. So I guess it's science or go fuck your mother. That's a Joey Diaz thing. If anybody fucking knows who that is, I'm talking to an audience of three people, I think. <laughs> science and black holes are just one of the crazy things about it. Man, Hope everybody's mind gathers itself and heals from this insane article. Stay healthy, everybody. Be good. My best to you and yours. <laughs>